advanced driver assistance systems have heavily relied on lane detection for autonomous decision making using perception. Welcome back to Learn Open CV. In this video, I will introduce you to the concept of lane detection and will also teach you how to fine tune the Segformer model from Hugging Face for lane detection using a Google Colab notebook. All right, let's get started. Lane detection is a cornerstone of modern vehicle safety systems. But what exactly is it? Simply put, lane detection is the process through which a vehicle's onboard systems identify and segment lane markings on the road. Using a combination of cameras and sensors, the vehicle constantly analyzes the road surface. These sophisticated systems scan for the contrast between the road and the lane markings, allowing the car to see and follow these lines. So what is the role of lane detection in ADAS? Traffic Flow Analysis Lane detection enables the vehicle to understand the road geometry, which is critical in complex driving scenarios such as merging and lane changing, and is essential for adaptive cruise control systems that adjust speed based on the surrounding traffic flow. Autonomous Navigation For semi-autonomous or autonomous vehicles, lane detection is a fundamental component that allows the vehicle to navigate and maintain its position within the road infrastructure. It's essential for route planning and decision-making processes in self-driving algorithms. Driver comfort. Systems that use lane detection can take over some of the driving tasks, reducing driver fatigue and enabling a more comfortable driving experience, especially during long journeys on the highway. All right, in this specific experiment, let's fine tune a Segformer B2 model using the Berkeley Deep Drive dataset. The BDD100K dataset is a comprehensive collection of diverse driving video sequences gathered from various urban and suburban locations. This dataset is pretty large as it has approximately 100K videos each of 40 seconds of length and covering a wide range of driving scenarios, weather conditions and times of day. The dataset also has rich annotations for lanes, drivable areas, objects such as vehicles, pedestrians, and traffic signs, which aids with the full-frame instance segmentation. In this research, a 10-person sample of the BDD100K dataset was used for fine-tuning the Segformer model. This sample includes 10,000 images selectively chosen to represent the dataset's comprehensive range of driving conditions and scenarios. Let's have a look at a few examples of images and annotation masks from the sample dataset. On the left, you can see the actual image from the POV camera placed on the car. And on the right, there is a valid ground truth mask of lane annotations. Here are two more examples. In this case, there are 7,000 images and masks for the train data set and about 3,000 images and masks for the valid set. Cool, let's quickly hop on to a Google Colab notebook and get this pipeline started. The primary purpose of the BDD dataset class is to efficiently load and pre-process image data and their corresponding segmentation masks from a specified directory. It is responsible for loading an image and its corresponding mask using their paths. The image is converted to RGB format while the mask is single channel grayscale. It is transformed into a binary format where non-zero pixels are considered part of the lane then the mask is resized to match the image dimensions and then converted into a tensor. Finally, the mask is also thresholded back to binary values and converted to a long tensor. For this, two separate data loaders must be created, one for the train set and the other for the validation set. The train data loader also requires a few transformations. All the images and masks have been resized to 360 cross 640 converted into PyTorch tensors and since this model was pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset, the same normalization has also been applied. In this code snippet, the Segformer B2 model has been initialized from the Hugging Face pre-trained semantic segmentation models library. Since we are trying to segment out the lanes from the road, this will be considered as a two-class segmentation problem. While you're at it, check if your deep learning environment supports CUDA acceleration using NVIDIA GPUs. For this experiment, an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti with 12 GB of VRAM was used for training. Let's have a quick look at the training and validation pipelines required for fine-tuning this model. But before that, how would you evaluate the performance of this model? 
For a semantic segmentation problem like this one, IOU or intersection over union is the primary metric for evaluation. This helps us to understand how much of the predicted mask overlaps the ground truth mask. To learn more about IOU, check out our video on this topic on our YouTube channel, Learn Open CV. This mean underscore IOU function does the following things. Flattening predictions and labels, shape validation, Jacquard score calculation, which uses the Jacquard score function, typically from a library like scikit-learn to calculate the Jacquard score for each class. And finally, the mean IOU computation. For model optimization, the famous Adam optimizer has been used with a learning rate of phi e raised to phi. In this experiment, the fine-tuning process was done for 30 epochs. In this next code snippet, the training loop for the fine-tuning process has been illustrated. For each epoch, the loop iterates over the training data loader which provides batches of images and mask pairs. These are the lane images and their corresponding segmentation masks. Each of the batch of images and masks are moved to a computational device like a GPU and the mask tensors channel is removed to match the required input format for the model. This model performs a forward pass receiving the images and mass as inputs. In this case, the pixel values parameter receives the images and the labels parameter receives the mass. The model outputs includes a loss value and logits. After this, the loss is back propagated to update the model's weights. Following this, the optimizer and the learning rate scheduler adjust the learning rate and other parameters during training. The logits from the model are resized to match the size of the masks using bilinear interpolation. This step is crucial for computing the model's predictions with the ground truth masks. For the validation aspect of this process, the model is set to evaluation mode, which disables certain layers and behaviors that are only used during training. In this case, for each batch in the validation dataset, the model generates predictions. These predictions are resized and processed to calculate the intersection over union metric. The mean IOU for each batch is calculated and aggregated to derive an average IOU for the epoch. After each epoch, the IOU is compared with the best IOU obtained in the previous epochs. If the current IOU is higher, it indicates an improvement and the model state is saved as the best model so far. Alright, so what do the results look like? Let's take a look at the inference pipeline as well. Initially, the pre-trained segformer weights have to be loaded. The number of classes also needs to be defined. From here, the best underscore model dot pth weights file exported by the previous code snippet needs to be loaded as well. This contains the best trained weights for the fine-tuned model. The model has to be set to evaluation mode. For loading and reading the video, OpenCV has been used and the cv2.videowriter method is used to export the final inference video with the masks overlap over the source video footage. One very important thing to keep in mind is that the same transforms that were used during the pre-processing of the dataset have to be used during the inference stage as well. Each frame from the video undergoes a series of transformations to match the input format expected by the model. These transformations include resizing, tensor conversion, and normalization. Great, so here are the final inference results from this fine-tuned hugging face segformer B2 model. And that's a wrap for today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting computer vision content. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.